Hey, what's up YouTube? It's ICU. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing the upcoming iOS 11.3.1 jailbreak utility. This is really a continuation of yesterday's update. So if you have yet to see that, definitely be sure to watch that video first because this one is merely a continuation off of that one. And then once you have, you can come back here and pick up where you left off. All right, so before we get into this, I just wanted to say I'm going to try to keep this video as quick and condensed as possible. There's so much going on lately that it's really hard to keep up with. I was actually planning on pushing this video out to you guys earlier today, but I wanted to wait to see whether or not Coolstar actually posted anything else on this subject because this is a good news, bad news situation, and the bad news is unfortunately coming from Coolstar. Now, before we hop into this, be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up. If you're excited for the upcoming 11.3.1 jailbreak and you appreciate these updates, also click that subscribe button and ding that notification bell if you're new. I'll keep you guys fully updated along the way and also when the new jailbreak is finally released. Now, starting with this tweet from last night, quote, still having issues with remount on 11.3.1. Can't make too much progress until this is fixed, unfortunately. So if you'll remember from a few updates ago, I discussed how 11.3.x's file system differs from 11.2.x's and it will take up additional storage when actually performing the jailbreak procedure, especially on 16 gigabyte devices. However, it looks like the issues don't stop there and a follow-up Coolstar actually elaborated and said major issues from the remount include but are not limited to Bluetooth not working, password protected Wi-Fi networks, and airplane mode toggle not working, Apple verification failing, camera app disappearing from the lock screen, and some others we probably haven't found yet. And for some additional clarification on that tweet, he said this is just from the remount by the way, without any other patches loaded at all. So he said, looks like we might have to wait and see what Morpheus has planned for LibreIOS's 11.3.1 remount. The current public implementation that was provided for remount is far too buggy to be usable. And he said that worst case scenario is that he has an alternative solution that we can use for 11.3.1 if the issues with the non-persistent bypass can't be fixed. However, it will be a piece of crap and would also burn the zero day, unfortunately. Now, for a little bit of clarification and insight on that last bit, that zero day part, he was essentially referring to a previously undisclosed exploit, which means that he does have an exploit that isn't public yet that he would have to burn through to actually work out those issues for that remount and it might be slightly janky. Hopefully though he actually finds another solution. I'm fully confident that whatever they bring us will be great whatever it is on whichever firmware we happen to be on whether it's 11.2.x or 11.3.x. And if you did update to 11.3.x don't have updater's remorse. We knew for a fact that 11.3.1 was going to be supported by this jailbreak. We didn't know whether 11.2.x was going to be supported. We only knew that after a Additional testing from Coolstar and we had no clue about the issues that were caused by the way the file system remounts and the differences between 11.2.x and 11.3.x and you can also take solace in knowing that if you're on 11.3.x you will have a much more stable device in general, simply because of the stability updates and improvements Apple has made from 11.2.x to 11.3.x. In my opinion, it is definitely better to be on 11.3 or 11.3.1, simply for that fact alone. Also, I am confident that by the time they actually work this thing out and get a full-fledged jailbreak created and ready for public release, that there will be almost no difference between 11.2.x and 11.3.x. If there is, then this will definitely be something new in the world of jailbreaking, but I'm confident that Coolstar and anyone else who participates in the creation of this jailbreak will have a fantastic idea and they'll be able to circumvent any potential remount issues that they are currently encountering. Remember guys, this is just a temporary setback and as I said a few updates ago, I wouldn't be surprised if it still takes a week or two to actually see something at all. It could take longer than that though, so don't hold me to that on that that very loose time frame. Again, we haven't had any official word from any developer. There is no ETA. And then our second update here is the great news that actually comes from Ian Beer, who most of you will know as the security researcher who actually discovered and disclosed the exploit that this jailbreak is actually built around. Well, it looks like he dropped another exploit earlier today. He said, 
empty list, a proof of concept exploit for iOS 11.3.1 kernel, and he posted a link to it, and it is the full-fledged exploit, guys. Now, of course, you're not going to be able to do anything with this exploit yourself, but essentially it looks like it is the VFS exploit that does remove the developer account specific entitlements from the jailbreak itself. So that means this should definitely catapult the 11.3.x jailbreak progress along significantly because now no longer is that developer account required to actually jailbreak 11.3.x or lower. So guys, no more developer account is required and we have proof of that by what Abraham Mastery said. He, for those of you who don't know, is the developer of Houdini. He tweeted out after that tweet from Ian Beer, quote, Houdini beta three release one IPA, no developer account required. So essentially he did update his Houdini application or his Houdini utility rather. And for those of you who don't know, that essentially is a tool to allow you to further customize your device. It does require root access. So in essence, it is sort of like jailbreaking your device. However, it doesn't provide Cydia. So it's not like the jailbreak 99% of jailbreakers are accustomed to. And this last bit at the end is absolutely critical. He says, thanks to Ian Beer for the great work on empty list. And that in conjunction with the no developer account required leads us to the conclusion that that exploit was specifically designed and intended to remove the use of that developer account or rather to remove the requirement of it to actually use the jailbreak itself. So I hope you guys liked this super quick update video. I'm not sure how long it's actually going to be. Hopefully it was quick enough. Like I said, I wanna let you guys know everything that's going on, give you some analysis, and keep you updated and in the loop while we're waiting for the jailbreak. Be sure to click that subscribe button below if you have yet to, you'll be fully notified. Stay tuned for future updates, and until then, this is ICU, signing out.